through here, right down through here. See, this wasn't here. This is all grown in. This was an open field like this. And I went down. 79-year-old Bill Bullybush is a lifelong resident of the Kecksburg area. For more than 20 years, he kept a secret from his neighbors in this small rural community. That one December night, he believes he saw an unidentified flying object over Kecksburg. Little did he know that many of his fellow citizens believed they saw the same thing. No way to change my mind. I know what I'm saying. And that, that was it. December 9th, 1965. It's about 4.30 p.m., just before sunset in Kecksburg, which is about 45 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. Bill Bullybush has just come home from work. As his wife prepares dinner, Bullybush heads outside to work on his pride and joy, a 1964 Chevy Corvair. He listens to the car's CB radio while he tinkers under the dash. And I heard guys from Ohio talking on there, and they were jabbering, they were coming east. And they, they said that they seen this thing too going east, you know, and they wondered what it was. Bullybush suddenly hears a hissing sound. He looks up, catching a glimpse of a glowing object in the sky. To get a better look, he gets out of his car and can plainly see the bright object overhead. Yeah, I watched it, and it, it was just like a big fireball. Then it was headed towards the mountain. And they come back a pretty good piece, and the first thing I know, it made a U-turn and went down into Kecksburg, down in the woods there. Less than two miles away, 16-year-old Robert Blystone sits on the back porch of his parents' home. He also spots the strange light. It was just a round fireball. You know, flames all around it with these different color vapors behind it and it just started slowing down like it was being controlled and the next thing i know it's beyond the hill where i can't see it no more but I, then i started seeing like smoke dust coming up out of the woods so i kind of fear it kind of crashed across town bill bullybush jumps into his corvair and drives to the kecksburg woods At the top of the hill overlooking the woods, Bully Bush stops, then turns on his parking lights so he can see into the valley. A strong smell of sulfur permeates the air. As Bully Bush makes his way down the hill, he hears a sizzling sound. I could see it down in the valley there, and uh, that's, that's where it, it landed, right in there. It knocked the top of the trees out and everything else. So I stood there for, well, I'd say 15 minutes looking at it. Meanwhile, 12 miles away in nearby Greensburg, the switchboard at radio station WHJB jumps to life. WHJB, could you hold on one second? Office manager Mabel Mazza answers the sudden flurry of phone calls. People were telling me something fell in Kecksburg and uh, somebody said it was a ball of fire, somebody said it was a plane wreck. There were just a number of stories that kept coming in. The phones just kept ringing. When Mabel fields a call from someone claiming to have seen a UFO outside Kecksburg, she hands the phone to John Murphy, the station's news director. Hey, John. I said, here, you take this one. John Murphy. All right, what what what'd you see? And he came back and he said to me, he said, this is a big one, kid. I'm going to Kecksburg. Wait, really? Your camera? Thanks, kid. See you later. WHJB. Back at the crash site, Bill Bullybush is trying to decide whether to move closer to the smoldering object partially embedded in the ground. The color of it was like a burnt orange. It was burnt from the front clear to the back. And I could see this ring around the back of it. And it looked like Egyptian writing on the back of it. There was no windows in it, no seams, no rivet marking. It was just a solid piece. 
Bully Bush fears the smoking object may explode. So after 15 minutes, he retreats. On the way to his car, he hears curious residents already gathering outside the woods. Bully Bush climbs into his Corvair and returns home. Within an hour, the area has been cordoned off by a growing number of military personnel and local officials. They refuse to let onlookers get closer to the mysterious object. Though they have a limited view, the group can see a plume of blue smoke rising from the forest. 19-year-old Bill Weaver is out for a joyride in Kecksburg when he hears a radio bulletin describing a strange light in the sky. Intrigued, he heads to the south side of the woods, an area that has not been secured by the military. Weaver finds a handful of people there, peering into the wooded valley. We thought it was a Russian satellite at first. But at 19 years old, I was still curious. Actually, I went back in there, was out of curiosity to see if there was something that did land there. In the waning evening light, Weaver says that he and the others can barely make out the object below. It looked like it had plowed into the ground somewhat. Radiating off, I don't know if it was the front or the back or side, was a blue light, much like a welder's light. It gets real bright and then it gets dull. It would go back and forth. As Weaver and the others try to get a better look, he says officials move them further back, away from the woods. Around 6.30 p.m., Bill Bullybush returns to the scene, this time with his seven-year-old son, Ricky. I never seen so many people, and the Army was there. I couldn't figure out how the Army got there so quick. The Army kept everybody away. About an hour later, WHJB newsman John Murphy arrives on the scene. He sneaks into the woods and secretly takes a few photographs of the strange object. No more pictures. Accounts differ, but those close to Murphy believe some key photographs are confiscated by officials. He begins recording statements from a number of people. What you are about to hear are excerpts of the actual interviews Murphy conducted. What it look like? Can you point out what part of the wood you saw it in? Right down there. Down in there. Was there any smoke coming from it? Yeah. Murphy calls in a bulletin to his colleague Stan Wall, WHJB's evening disc jockey. I'm out in the woods here outside of Kecksburg. It's bright and there's smoke every place. Okay, John, I'll give you, uh, you're going to be online in like 30 seconds, okay? John didn't like to go on the air if he wasn't certain with something. He, he didn't like to speculate. He gave us different opinions on what it could have been. As the evening went on, people really became anxious to find out what really happened. Then we had other radio stations and TV stations and so forth calling about this thing that had landed in Kecksburg. A growing military contingent continues to clear the area of onlookers as Murphy tries to collect more eyewitness accounts. About an hour and a half later, at 9 p.m., Bob Gatti, a 22-year-old reporter, arrives at the scene from the Greensburg paper, the Tribune Review. Along the road were state police, and there were some military people there, and uh, I believe they were army people, and they had guns. They were keeping people from going back into this field. Robert Blystone is less than a quarter mile from his parents' home. From there, he sees a flurry of activity. A large flatbed truck, accompanied by army jeeps, disappears into the wooded valley. Almost two hours later, the convoy emerges. But Blystone notices that the flatbed is no longer empty, and he sees what the military is trying to hide. And you can see on the flatbed a design 
under the uh, tarp, like a bell shape or a acorn shape vehicle that was under there. Robert Blystone isn't the only one who sees this strange cargo. By the next day, several eyewitnesses tell John Murphy, Bob Gaddy, and others that they saw a strange object in the sky that they believe came to Earth. The front page of our local paper, the Grazer Tribune Review, had big headlines on Army ropes off area, unidentified flying object falls near Kexpert. But another article in a later edition of the paper suggests that the eyewitnesses are mistaken. In that piece, state troopers say they have recovered, quote, absolutely nothing from the site. According to at least one researcher, this story and later statements make eyewitnesses suspect a government cover-up. The question still remains, what was this object? Uh, and we've been trying to track down to get answers to that for many, many years. The people want to know the truth. They want to know if we're alone out there. December 10th, 1965. One day after about a dozen people near Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, witness what they believe was a UFO crash. Many are surprised to read in their local paper that government officials have discovered no physical evidence. They made a thorough search in the woods and there was nothing there, and that officially the government was saying now that people have been mistaken, nothing had fallen to in the woods. Stan Gordon is a local UFO researcher who has studied the Kecksburg case for nearly 40 years. He was 16 years old at the time of the incident. Gordon and others will challenge that conclusion for the next four decades. In the days following the events of December 9th, local radio station WHJB's news director, John Murphy, gathers the eyewitness accounts he had recorded that night. The journalist is intrigued by the tapes which indicate that something fell into the woods outside Kecksburg. The following is an excerpt from Murphy's tapes. You a described explosion? Well, I seen two big bright flashes and a long streak of orange light. I figured it was a plane. He decides to produce a documentary about that night. Murphy titles his project.